welcome to Spotlight and you're joining us at a rather interesting moment because we are really privileged to have a live in the industry working as we speak uh, production manager in the form of Sally Gamji. Hello Sally. Hi. <laughs> Sally, tell us, a you are a production manager, so you've obviously gone through a heck of a journey to get from where you started to production manager. Tell us that journey. Well, I'm from a tiny, tiny town. That, like, when I'm saying tiny town, it means, like, one main street, two side streets, tiny town. So TV wasn't really a thing. What I did do was love um, theatre. So I... Like, I constantly, I was like, I was anything. I was like on stage, I was backstage, I was like stage managing, I was literally doing anything. And um, I wanted to be a writer. And so I wrote a script, uh, got into a master's in City University in London, and then um, came, moved to London. And I wanted to be a writer. And I kind of fell into the wrong side of TV, but I actually quite enjoy it now. But at the time, so I kind of, um, I finished, I was still doing my masters um, at this point and I, I'd been working in a pub, had an argument, still a very good friend of mine, but I had an argument with the manager and I was like, I'm, I didn't come here to work in a pub, I came here to get into TV, blah, blah, blah. So um, my, my masters was in creative writing for a theatre, film and TV and I specialised in TV. So after I had this argument, I spent the next day off essentially calling every single, I looked up on Google, what's the top 50 um, production, TV uh, production companies in London. And I basically just spent an entire day calling all these companies. And so I got an interview with Shine. I was like, oh, great. Started the job the next week as a runner, office runner. Brilliant. And so I was kind of like managed to get myself settled in. I was like trying to do as much as possible because office running in that office at that point, I basically needed to do 10 or 15 minutes an hour. Like of my, that's, I could get my job completed every hour, 10 or 15 minutes because it was, you know, keeping place tidy, stuff in the printer and all of that. Uh, one production manager, she was quite, um, she was just really shorthanded. And so I was like, do you want a hand? So I would like scan in release forms or I do floats for her, I do loads of things like this. And then I, yeah, I kind of, I left there. I went to work at Hattrick uh, on dinner date, 32 episodes, I think. And dinner date, I was prod sec and that was firmly, that's where I stood. And I did loads of um, CRB checks or um, uh, DBS checks for all the contribs and everything. And then I did that for, the guts for a year maybe and then I applied for a junior coordinator role and um, ended up getting the three-day nanny and it was as a coordinator and then I kind of um, I worked there for on a couple of shows for um, for a year and then or more and then I started working on the world rugby show um, for Sky at this company that um, they had like they did loads of online content as well. So and I was the only production person with a HLP or the head of production. And I really like I was I was working mental hours out of very little money. And um I was really, really like um I learned so much because there was I, I was given so much responsibility as well. So um, I was junior production manager for three years. Got my first gig as like production manager without like the junior attached to it. Um, on the anniversary show of Grand Designs, the twentieth anniversary of Grand Designs. Tell us about what a production manager. Take a program that you work on, and tell us about yes. the role of the production manager. Um, what, in other words, what do they do? A good way that I've kind of found to describe a production manager, think of anything to do with money, and that is my job. So that goes from hiring the staff to um, hiring to the camera equipment to, to organizing all of that, all the logistics, flights, travel, car hire, anything like that, accommodation. Um, so you've got all the logistics side of it and the, the money side, the schedule. Now you work on the schedule with the producer or the director, sometimes they're the same person, um, in order to make sure that the schedule 
you need to stick to a schedule and then work out how that schedule affects cost because if you say you're going to go somewhere for a day and actually you end up going there for two days well that means that you've got an extra night of hotel you've got an extra night paying someone well actually it's not just that you've got your hotel costs you've got to feed them so you've got to pay money to feed them you've got to pay money um for like extra parking and and all of these little extra things you have to think about and how that schedule affects it so every time and it happens a lot the, the PD, producer director, changes the schedule. You then have to go back in and redo how much money that's going to cost. Then I'd also, so I'd like do the negotiations for camera equipment, like, so, you know, calling up, getting a camera hire. Sometimes if you're in one place for a while, you might call up the hotel and try and get a deal. It's negotiations as well. Um, and then you go into pre production, uh, sorry, post production. And so um, then set similar thing, you've got your schedule. So I'm um, post-production, just always have an extra, like there's never enough money for post-production because no matter how, how well prepared you are, you will never be prepared enough. What, what would be the sort of bullet pointed skills you think you need as a production manager? To be calm under pressure. People will come to you with problems. They'll come and moan at you. Don't, uh, don't argue, like, because they just want a moan. Don't say no. Just say, I'll think about it. Let me see. Because you don't always know. Like, people be like, I want, like, a drone for, you know, tomorrow. <laughs> okay, right. Let me, like, let me just go and see what we can do, right? See, and then you kind of go in, you check the budget, and then you go, all right, well, actually, if you don't, um, do you need to do this day filming? Because if not, then we can take that money and then we can hire a drone operator. And then you kind of then start, if, you re if you're okay with this compromise, then I then start ringing, work together as a team, but be really organized, like, because you have to organize everybody else. You just need to kind of think ahead. And like, when someone wants to do something, don't, uh, don't like you know oh that's a great idea but then also just think about the practical steps about how you can do something and how you can do something safely as well because I'll tell you another thing production even though and this it's not right but it's what's supposed to happen so the person the most senior person who's on location needs to write the risk assessment let me tell you I've had two instances where that person has written the risk assessment pretty much every time I've written them and then they've looked over them and tweaked them to how they feel and then it's been signed off by everybody so learn how to write a risk assessment as well for for student level what would you say what what, what sort of things are you looking for in the hiring process one thing that um don't put no put it on your cv but do not put your student films under work experience because put it under experience. But like you, if you weren't paid to do something, because like I, I know that if you've just finished university and you've put down that you're a director, I know that that's like, you're, you're looking for a runner's job, not, you know, so Put that because that's still really good experience to people and i've seen this way too often that um sometimes people try and make out that actually they that's like a, a page like that they're now a director and stuff and you're like just know that now i had experience as a events coordinator events and theater coordinator when i moved to london and wanted to get into tv i still had to go back to runner level even though the same job that I did for theatre and events, I could do in TV, but I still had to go back and learn how TV works and stuff. So everybody has to start at the bottom and you will be grateful for starting at the bottom as well because there's so many things that you get to learn and it's actually really fun being a runner. Um, but yeah, so I'd say make sure that you put, you know, put that experience on there. But also things like, 
um, like I mentioned earlier, things that have transferable skills, like things like um, bar work and and um, and waitressing and stuff. That's what I did. Like at the end of the night, you'll usually like end up you'll be cashing up the till. You'll have like had to do, um, you know, if a customer was angry, you will have had to do, you know, placate that customer and you know do some sort of like calming them down. And so those sort of things are transferable skills. So you can put that on there until you get your first credit you know until until you get a job you can put those things on there because i look for things like that because um i find that actually those that those sort of skills are really valuable like the same as you know working in the show, you know things like in production you've got or as a runner you will usually be the one that has the flow you were saying you were saying that you rang a lot of people um, you know, that yes. you were ringing round lots of production companies. Is that still the way to do it today? Well, I, I don't see an, an issue like calling up, um, you know, no, this is calling up receptions, by the way. So not like not finding <laughs> someone's phone number and calling them up. Because if you did that, I'd just be like, no, um, don't annoy me. <laughs> um, but I, yeah, I think um there's no harm and you know do you have any jobs going you know sometimes the businesses can be too big so they won't know but then the smaller companies like the indies they will usually know because that receptionist will probably have been the one that posted the advert in the first place so they will know there's more facebook groups as well but as you get up go up the ladder and like branch out into different like i'm in one just like a blanket one for people who've had I had to send my CV to the admin to get accepted, like into this group when I was a project really? because you, yeah, and they're really strict. The, the, not the runners one. The, there's the people who work in people who work in TV who know people who work in TV, and they're really strict and they will kick people out without a second thought. If you break the rules, they've got a whole list of rules and stuff. Then I'm in another one for production, um, like production managers and execs and things like that. So Facebook is now, and Facebook is often where I will go to find someone as well. I'll post jobs into this group um, because it's just it's just a lot easier. And I know a lot of people. Um, I know a talent manager that she goes to Facebook and puts on there. A lot of people will because that's where everybody is. Like you know, people will be scrolling through Facebook, and it's it's you can get the most catchment area. Though I did get told by my little sister that no one goes on Facebook anymore, but. Um, and that I'm old for being on Facebook. But at the same time, if you want jobs, go on to that Facebook group. <laughs> My day is never, the, I never have the same day twice. And I really enjoy that, like, I don't know what's going to happen. What's, like, what random thing is going to, like, I know so much about Radon in Mines and Caves because... We were going to shoot um, Aldo Kane in a mine or a cave for 10 days and do a doc it was the Horizon documentary. Now it ends up being a nuclear bunker. But I had to, I learned all about radon and you just meet some um, like amazing, amazing people. And it's also so cool. So how like you meet them when you're, you know, when you're starting out and then you end up working together again and like you're both running like each, you know, it's just, it's just really, it's really cool that you kind of, it's a really small world TV, by the way. Don't piss anyone off. Um, because it's, uh, and everybody knows, it's, if you don't know that person, chances are that you know, you have at least one, most likely five or six friends in common. Because everybody, because it's all freelancers, so we all move about different companies. The companies say the same, but quite often the team, you know, and so I think the randomness of learning random, you know, whatever it is and the friends that you make, I think they're the best kind of things in TV in general. Sally Gamji on Spotlight. Thank you so much. That was absolutely brilliant. Thank you.